How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Let's Just Go Travel. So, today's the day. I'm finally going to give you guys my long term review of our travel trailer, the Jayco 166 FBS. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mike. My wife and I have been traveling and living inside of this RV for over the past year, traveling all around North America. We first started in Vancouver, British Columbia, where we went from the west coast of Canada all the way to the east coast. We then took our rig southwest. We went all the way down to the bottom of the Baja California Peninsula in Mexico. We spent a couple of solid months there. That was really, really awesome. And then we came back up into the States. We hung out in the southwestern United States for a while. We visited places like Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, all these amazing places with super gorgeous landscapes. And after that, we came back up into Canada and then we headed up north. We explored places such as the Yukon, Northwest Territories and Alaska. And finally, we drove as far north as you possibly could on this continent, all the way up the Dempster Highway to the Arctic Ocean, where we stood and looked out at the edge of the world. It has been an amazing journey, the greatest adventure of our life. And yeah, now it's finally time to see just how well this rig stood up to this past year of travel. All in all, we have put roughly 50,000 kilometers of mileage on this trailer. So we have definitely put it to the test many times over. We've gone through some really crazy conditions. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over all of our thoughts about this trailer, how we've liked it living inside of this thing full time for the past year, all the mods that we've done on this trailer to make it full time livable. And most importantly, I'm also gonna go over all the things that I've ever broken on this trailer because I know that's what you're really after and that's why you clicked on this video. We survived an entire year in this thing, so we've definitely seen all the different seasons and we know really well what this trailer can and can't handle. And make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you my honest opinion about whether or not I would buy this trailer again and if I would still recommend it to other people who are thinking about buying it. So in this video, I'm not gonna be going over things like the features and specs of this trailer. I'm only gonna be focused on what our thoughts are about it after living in it long term and the things that have broken inside of it. If you guys want a complete detailed tour about the features and stuff of this trailer, you can check out our original review video, link in the description below. And yeah, I just kind of pulled it up on my phone here. <laughs> ah, young Mike, you have no idea what you're about to get into. All right, let's jump in. Well, she's still here, still in one piece for the most part, and like really, really dirty right now. We are currently on our way back down the Dempster Highway, which is a 900 kilometer stretch of gravel road going all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. It was a heck of an experience, but man, did it make this trailer dirty. I mean, it just goes to show, we've taken this trailer down some pretty crazy places, all sorts of different environments. I'm talking sand, mud, dirt, gravel. We've been in windstorms and snowstorms and had our pipes frozen. Basically, we've lived all four seasons in this thing and we've seen the extremes of all four seasons too. We've taken it down to some of the hottest beaches in Mexico and up to the tallest, coldest mountains in Utah. But it has gotten us to some really, really amazing places. We have stayed at some of the most mind-blowing campsites in the entirety of this continent. If you want more details about some of the awesome trips that we've been on, I definitely recommend checking out some of our vlogs of all of our adventures. We go into a lot of detail in terms of how to get to these places and where to hang out and where to explore. And yeah, we'd love to share all those adventures with you guys. We would also really appreciate a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We are always posting super fun travel adventures as well as videos like this where we go over some of the more technical aspects. And yeah, we hope you guys enjoy our videos. The small size of this trailer was what really drew us to it in the first place. We love being able to take this trailer off the beaten path to places that you normally wouldn't be able to go with a larger trailer, but at the same time, it has enough amenities to keep us comfortable and happy. And yeah, it definitely has been a really great trailer for that. It's brought us to a lot of amazing locations and gave us a lot of awesome memories. It definitely hasn't all been perfect. There's been a number of things on this trailer that have broken, mostly small things, but a couple of them are big. I'm gonna first talk about the good stuff and then I'll talk about the bad stuff afterwards. 
So in terms of the outside, it has held together pretty well for the most part. We've never had anything like roof leaks or the structure breaking down or damage to the frame or anything like that. Electrical components on the outside still work like the lights, the power jack, the awning, the speakers, all of that has been totally fine. The slide out still works fine. We did have a little bit of an issue with the motor, which I'll get into when we go inside, but the actual rail that the slide sits on as well as the structure of it has never failed. So in terms of the bad stuff, we have had issues with our axle and brake systems. The first was our brakes. We had discovered that the entire inside of the drum had become contaminated with grease, but we were able to get both brakes replaced by Dexter under warranty. So that was really, really nice. But a couple of months later, we had an issue with our axle, which seemed like it was starting to bend a little bit. We contacted Dexter again about that and they sent us a brand new axle and paid for a shop to install them. So it ended up being totally fine, but it could have been a big issue if either of these things had happened in an area where we weren't able to get help or service or parts or things like that. So, so I think the axle on this trailer is definitely one of its weak points. You don't have a lot of payload with a single axle trailer in general. I kind of wish this trailer was built with a bigger axle and maybe even a dual axle. Another issue we had was when we were in Mexico, one of the supports for our fresh water tank completely gave out and we tow with full fresh water tanks in this trailer pretty often just because we're generally boondocking, dry camping, we're not going to an RV park with hookups. So we usually have a fair amount of water in the water tank. When we crossed into Mexico at our very first campsite there, we discovered that one of the supports had given out. And that's when I discovered that all the screws holding in the support bars on this trailer are held in with self-tapping screws. So as soon as I was able to, I replaced all of those screws with nuts and bolts instead. And those have held on really, really well. Yeah, definitely if you have this trailer or if you're thinking about buying it for the purposes of boondocking and dry camping, that's an upgrade that you should definitely make either yourself or just get your dealer to do it for you. I don't trust only having self-tapping screws on the support bars to hold up a 55 gallon freshwater tank because that's a lot of weight. And lastly, we had an issue with our spare tire carrier. This actually happened pretty early on when we got the trailer. The original mount from the factory for the spare tire was really, really weak and it broke during a drive. It almost broke completely off, which would have been super dangerous, but this ended up being a whole recall. And yeah, the spare tire mount that is on it now is way better, but honestly, that one was pretty bad because if something like that fell off of your trailer on the highway, that could be really disastrous. So I'm glad that we sorted that out early on, but it was still a thing that we had to deal with. The biggest mod we've done on this trailer by far is our electrical system. So up on the roof, we have 550 watts of solar panels. These are flexible panels to keep down on the weight. And in terms of the battery setup, we have 510 amp hours of lithium batteries, as well as a 3000 watt inverter that powers everything we could ever need inside the trailer, including things like the microwave and the AC. It was definitely the biggest project in terms of outfitting this trailer for full-time living, but it's been awesome. And it lets us enjoy all the regular comforts of home life without compromises. Also on the outside, on the back ladder, we've mounted our WeBoost as well as Starlink, so we can always be connected wherever we go. Both of those services have worked out great, especially the Starlink over the past year. It has made it so we can live out on the road while managing our businesses back at home remotely and enable us to live this awesome lifestyle. The tires have held up remarkably well over this past year, I feel. Like I said, we have about 50,000 kilometers on this trailer now. So really happy about the tires. Not as happy about the stairs outside. The stairs are probably one of our least favorite parts of this whole trailer, just because during travel, they get stored inside. So they usually get really, really dirty while they're sitting outside all the time. And when you have to travel to a new destination, you gotta put them inside. You can never clean them off totally enough, especially if it's like wet and muddy. Not a big fan of those. Wish we could swap those out for just regular old RV steps that come out from the bottom outside and never go inside, so yeah. All right, so in terms of the interior of the trailer, when we set out on this journey, we really wanted to make sure that the inside of the trailer was fit for full-time living and had everything that we need in order to feel comfortable and have all the same amenities that we'd be used to in order to live full-time on the road. It's done a whole bunch of upgrades and outfitted the interior of here for full-time living that works really, really well for us. So we started out with some small upgrades such as adding shelves to the existing cabinets just so we could have more storage or more organized storage. And as time progressed, we added more things such as making underneath the couch accessible in order to have more storage in there. And we also built a laundry hamper in the bathroom behind the toilet so we could put dirty clothes in there. It was really 
really important for me to have a workable office space here inside the trailer. Not only are we always working on these YouTube videos, but we also have businesses that we need to run remotely on the road. So it's important for us to have a space where we can do that and I've sort of set up behind the TV as sort of like my workstation. I've put my laptop back there with all my camera gear, charging batteries, things like that, as well as, you know, just having a good computer set up for when I'm doing video editing on the road. So that's worked out really, really well. We've upgraded the mattress in this trailer. That's usually a no brainer for anyone getting an RV. The mattresses that they come with are not great. We also upgraded the couch cushions that happened while we were on the road when we were in Vegas. The old couch cushions had become super worn and not comfortable. So we went to like a foam shop and had them cut a piece for us. And we kind of replaced all the cushions side of the couch. That was a really, really good addition while we were on the road for sure. We've done some other small things here and there such as the flip up countertop in the kitchen so we can get some more space while we're cooking and yeah all in all all the different upgrades that we added in here have made it really livable and having been on the road for over a year now we've fine-tuned everything to you know kind of work really really well for us and our lifestyle so in terms of everything that's ever broken in here there's there's a few there's a few for sure one of the most common things that breaks inside of this trailer is to do with the drawers so a lot of the times the bottoms of the drawers will just kind of fall out because they're just not supported very well as well as the slides that these drawers come with they're usually pretty small and not very durable so i've had to reinforce the bottoms of almost every single drawer as well as replace the drawer slides out of pretty much all of the drawers at least all the ones in the kitchen so yeah definitely you want to watch out for that if you're ever thinking about getting this trailer the drawers will likely kind of fall apart on you in one way or another it's not a very hard fix usually it's just loose screws and things like that but make sure you're kind of ready for it our stove in the kitchen has definitely been through some rough times over the past year many parts of it have kind of fallen apart things like the elements and the element brackets have come apart in all sorts of different ways so i've had to drill multiple new holes in the stove to make sure the elements keep going and hold up as we have gone through our trip. So our stove probably needs to be replaced entirely at this point. So it's definitely gotten some really good use out of this past year. We're using it like three times a day at least every single day for over a year. So the fridge, that's also been a big issue over the past, a little more recently I guess. It's really only happened within the last like couple of months of this year long journey. So basically what we learned was that the supports that hold this fridge in place just aren't very well made and this fridge has had a constant issue with kind of sinking down or almost falling away from the wall and yeah i've tried multiple things to kind of fix it but it really just needs to be completely taken apart and the cabinetry framing completely rebuilt behind it more than likely so yeah that's something we're gonna have to deal with at some point it would basically sink down and it would make it impossible to open the drawer that was underneath it and as well as letting in a whole bunch of dust around the seals of it because it's not sitting flush into the wall anymore it definitely needs a bit of a repair we're hoping once we get home we can just kind of take it apart and pull the fridge out completely rebuild the cabinetry around it just so it has more support so the slide in the living room area here back when we first got this trailer this is actually pretty early on the slide motor actually the mounting for it had come completely loose and the slide motor was just kind of like dangling there until it actually completely fell off and just wouldn't work anymore so yeah that was a weak point in this trailer at the beginning we've since gotten it fixed and added another screw that holds it in place way better so yeah during this entire year-long journey we've never had any more problems with it it's been all good we haven't had any leaks coming from the slide or anything like that actually we've never had any leaks come from the outside like the roof or anything like that in this trailer ever so kind of fingers crossed that's usually a pretty common thing that you'll hear of but yeah never had any roof leaks never had any exterior water leaks from outside we have had to deal with dust just because there's just so many different holes that go either down into the floor or behind the fridge or through like the cracks of the slide seals and things like that there's always going to be somewhere for kind of air to push itself in and if you're driving down a super dusty dirt road getting dust inside of here it's kind of inevitable no matter how hard you try so that's just something you got to deal with we had to get our max fan replaced apparently like the blades warped or something like that over the first few months that we had gotten it i think what had happened there was we went through like a really really bad heat wave and during that time we weren't using the trailer so it was just kind of sitting in our driveway and it probably just got so hot in that area that the fan probably like warped a little bit just from the heat itself i don't know either way we had that fixed under warranty brand new max fan and it's been totally fine since then we haven't had any weird issues 
the vent fan in the bathroom needs to get completely replaced. So over the past like few months, there's these little plastic clips that kind of hold the bug screen in place. All of those have basically broken apart. And about a month ago, it failed even more when the fan motor decided to die. So basically that entire vent fan was mostly useless and we have to probably replace the whole thing. So I said we've never had any sort of water leaks from the roof or the exterior get in, but we have had a couple of small leaks inside of the trailer. A few things that have leaked has been our hot water tank, as well as our shower drain and the water line that goes into the toilet. Basically, in every single one of those scenarios, it was just a loose fitting that I could tighten with my hand. So none of them ended up being a big problem in any sort of way, but I'm just glad I discovered all of them when they did happen because yeah, you don't want to let stuff like that sit and you know not notice until way, way later when you already have like water damage in your subfloor or whatever, right? So yeah, glad we caught those early. And ever since I tightened all those fittings, we've never had any more water leaks in any of those areas repeat itself. Oh, another thing, that happened with the fridge while we were on the road was sort of the hinge system that it sits on. It's just kind of made of plastic and it broke while we were in Mexico in the middle of nowhere. So we thought that we were just gonna have to go without a fridge anymore because we weren't able to initially figure out a way to put the fridge back on without having a hinge. Uh, it was just gonna fall off every single time. So I ended up doing this really stupid DIY thing out on the road in Mexico in the middle of nowhere and we made it work for you know the time being. So it's just sometimes when you're out there and you have no access to things like a Home Depot, <laughs> You just kind of have to use whatever you got and band-aid it until you get somewhere where you can get actual supplies. <laughs> so in terms of other things that I have broken inside of this trailer, it's mostly just been a whole bunch of other like loose screws, either in like the drawers or the microwave or other cabinetry or just things like that. So most of the time it's a loose screw somewhere that you can just kind of put back in place or put a little bit of glue on it and put it back where it was. Despite all the different things that have broken inside of this trailer, at the end of the day, it has been a really, really great home to us. It's been super comfortable and it has absolutely everything that we need. And all the different major systems, such as, you know, your water, your heater, your lights, none of that has ever broken inside of this trailer. All of those things are still going super strong. I was afraid of being out on the road and having something like the furnace break when you're somewhere really, really cold and now you're basically freezing or having your water stop working or your hot water stop working. You know, none of those things have ever happened to us. We count ourselves lucky. This has for the most part held up in a really good way and been able to take us across the finish line and, you know, kept us warm and comfortable and happy the whole time, right? So, you know, those are all big wins for sure. So I wanted to touch on our warranty experiences in the past. So that's a really big important thing for anyone that's considering buying one of these things because you know, they're advertised as having a really good warranty. I think when it comes to warranty, you're gonna have, you know, different experiences depending solely on where you bought your trailer from and if they're a really good dealer that kind of has your back. Because practically every single time I had any sort of warranty related issue, I needed a part replaced that was broken, I would contact the warranty department at my dealer and then they would coordinate getting me the part and shipping it out and stuff like that. And that always happened super fast. You know, I would be in the middle of, you know, Arizona or New Mexico and I'd have something break and I would just email them, take a picture, send them the serial number and stuff like that. And then usually within like a couple days, they would write back and say, okay, you've been approved for such and such warranty. And they would mail me the part. I would usually just get them sent back home and then have like a family member send them to me. Uh, depending on where I was. But yeah, it was actually a really smooth experience. And during other times, like when I had to get the axle replaced, I dealt with the axle manufacturer directly and just kind of sent them all the info. And then they basically asked, okay, where do you want us to ship this new axle? So, and then I got to pick whatever shop I wanted, you know? So you have to do some of the legwork yourself sometimes, like arranging for a shop to receive it and install it and time it with you needing to be there, especially if you're on the road at the same time and traveling. So we definitely had to deal with stuff like that. But yeah, pretty much every single experience in terms of warranty has been great. I know a lot of people have horror stories in terms of, you know, leaving their trailer to get warranty work at so-and-so dealer and it you know taking forever or them just kind of ignoring you or whatever but in our experience warranty has been great so we've definitely experienced all different types of weather inside of this trailer we have gone from super hot you know talking mid 30 degrees celsius all the way down to below freezing and this trailer has rocked it 
great every single time. We did have a couple of nights when we were in Utah and I think again in Nevada where our pipes froze because of how cold it was outside. But on those days, we would just kind of wait until it got a little bit warmer during the day and things would be fine again. When it's cold outside, the furnace in this trailer works awesome. It always kept us toasty warm. When it was really, really hot outside, we usually had the max fan going, which works for I'd say like 95% of situations where it's too hot because it just really pulls air. It gets a good airflow going inside of here and it's usually really, really comfortable. If I could change anything about the layout of the interior of our trailer, it would probably be something to do in the kitchen. I would probably just kind of downgrade the three burners down to two burners so we had more countertop space or have a bigger sink, things like that, just because we basically never have any need to have three pots or pans going at the same time cooking. And the sink we always feel is just a little bit too small to effectively do like if you have like a big pot or a big pan that you're trying to wash. So yeah, smaller stove, bigger sink, or more countertop space, you know, something like that would be awesome. But yeah, despite everything, it's always been a nice, comfortable, warm space for us to come back to at the end of a super long day out exploring. It genuinely has been a really good home for us. So here we are now at the end of the video and it's time for the burning question. Do I think that this trailer is quality or junk? While it definitely hasn't been perfect, it generally did get the job done and was able to complete this giant North American cross-continent journey that we were on for the past year. In terms of whether or not this trailer is for you, I think that really depends on what type of camping you're planning to do with it and how handy you are in general. If you're planning on just taking this out during summer or for weekends and small trips, it is an awesome, amazing trailer. I'm sure it will serve you well for many years if you're planning to do what we did and live in this thing full time and go all across the entire continent and go on crazy adventures off-road. It is a good choice for that, but you need to really be aware of the fact that you will be fixing things along the way. That's just a fact of life, not just with this RV, with any RV in general. And you have to have the skills and the tools and the know-how to be able to tackle small jobs. And most of it will just be small jobs. It's not gonna be like your walls are gonna fall down or your roof is gonna cave in. It's pretty rare for big things to go wrong. And like you've seen in my experience, even when some bigger things do go wrong, like our axle needing to be replaced, we were able to get it done in a timely fashion and get right back on the road. I think at this trailer's price point, you are getting a product that is mostly good enough for this sort of travel. There are better, but that obviously comes with a larger price tag. I'm talking brands like Ember RV and Black Series, trailers that were meant to go off-road and were designed as such, but they're gonna be almost twice as expensive than this trailer. Overall, I am happy with the experience that I had with this trailer. It kept us comfortable and safe and happy throughout this past year as we lived full time in it. And it definitely brought us a lot of amazing memories. So in terms of our plans now for the trailer, we still have to get all the way back down the Dempster Highway and then start heading home back to BC. Once we get home, our initial plans are to fix everything up in this trailer that we were only able to band-aid while on the road, such as replacing the entire stove and fixing up the support for the fridge, as well as just giving it the biggest cleaning of its life. Because after living in this thing for an entire year, it is pretty dirty. We do have a lot of road trips and travel plans in the future. We're not entirely sure if a trailer is gonna be the best fit for that. So we have talked about the idea of selling this trailer once we get back home and fix everything up. So if you happen to be in the Vancouver, BC, Canada area and are interested in a trailer like this, maybe drop us a line but plans are always changing we're not sure what's gonna happen next so if you are thinking about buying this trailer or already own it I would highly recommend you join this Facebook group called the J Feather micro owners group it is a great resource and community that you can join and ask questions and find out firsthand accounts from real owners what their experience was like with this trailer I hope you guys found this video helpful if you have any more questions or if there's anything that I missed uh, feel free to write a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And if you're an owner yourself, I would love to hear your experience with this trailer in terms of the things that you've done to it and if things have ever broken for you and all the cool places that you were able to take it. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you guys to get a real idea of what it's like to live inside one of these trailers for a whole year and going all sorts of crazy distances with it and how it all looks on the other end of that. Definitely a fun experiment for sure. And yeah, we had an amazing past year in this thing, all said and done. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. My name is Mike, or let's just go travel. And we'll see you guys on the next adventure.